My name is Frederick. I'm the Partnerships Manager for the Global Vector Hub at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. Um, and the Global Vector Hub is this exciting new online platform um, aimed at sharing data, networks and resources on vector control and being this new revolutionary open access platform to enable researchers, vector control agents, health officials, NGOs and anyone else who is active in vector control globally to connect with each other and um, to build capacity and reduce the burden of vector-borne diseases worldwide. The problem, uh, that as, has, as it had been identified by the WHO in their Global Vector Control Response Strategy 2017 till 2030, is that over 80% of the world's population is at risk of one or more vector-borne diseases. And 17% of the global burden of communicable diseases is due to vector-borne diseases, particularly malaria, but also dengue, chikungunya, and yellow fever. And this results in over 700,000 deaths every year by caused by vector-borne diseases. But there is currently no single all encompassing resource for vector-borne disease control and information. And this is what we are trying to address with the Global Vector Hub. So to go back to the Global Vector Control Response, this was a strategy released by the WHO in 2017. And as Marianne had mentioned in the introduction already, there are several aims to effectively implement locally adapted sustainable vector control. These include strengthening intra and intersectoral action and collaboration, engaging and mobilizing communities, enhancing vector control, sorry, ve enhancing vector surveillance, monitoring and evaluation of interventions, and the scaling up and integration of tools and approaches. And this very much along these aims, the aims of the Global Vector align very closely. We want to build global vector control capacity. We want to establish a community of practice. We want to control, uh, sorry, we want to connect vector control professionals worldwide. And we want to enable evidence-based decision-making for policymakers. So the main audiences for the Global Vector Hub are vector researchers, public health workers, government agencies, policymakers, private companies involved in vector control, and non-government organizations. So I'm going now to the landing page of the Global Vector Hub, as we are hoping that you will see in a few months time when we're able to release the full version. So this is the start page and here you will have different options to access. And we're gonna start with the resources on the bottom left. This will give you an overview of different types of resources that you can access. For instance, a while we want to establish a community of practice. So these resources include free research tools, standard operating procedures, various guidelines and manuals, for instance, how to operate uh, insect traps in the field, how to test vectors for any diseases, but also for insecticide resistance, how to carry out uh, clinical studies, and how to rear mosquitoes or other vectors in insectaries. There are official guidelines and manuals, for instance, from the WHO, but also from the CDC. We will also include bespoke training packages, and we're currently in the process of finalizing a massive open online course together with the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine, the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, the IVCC and our colleagues at Arctec. And all the material from this course will also be integrated in the resource section. Moving then on, we'll have the data aspect. And here people, users will be able to access a large set of data sets, for instance, uh, about vector species, about their occurrence, um, where they have been monitored for insecticide resistance, um, where they have been monitored for any diseases and pathogens being vectored, and also for anyone who's active in vector surveillance and, and control in these fields. We will also include country-specific summaries that will allow users to quickly access relevant information. So in this example that you can see on the screen, we're using the Republic of Colombia and South America. The introduction gives you a quick overview about the situation in Colombia, about the population and about the prevalent diseases. We will then guide you to, I'm sorry, we'll guide you to the most common vector-borne diseases. 
and also the most common disease vectors. And furthermore, we'll highlight the current uh, activities in the field of vector surveillance and vector control. For instance, uh, in this example, the distribution of insecticide-treated bed nets, larviciding and sprain campaign, monitoring of insecticide resistance, um, risk communication, vaccination against yellow fever. Moreover, this will also show you relevant resources, data and connections specific for Colombia. The third aspect is the networking function. Here, users will be able to register and then join the, on the online research community. This will allow them to identify and find other researchers on users who are active in the same field, in the same country, or working on the same organism. Um, they will also be able to identify other vector research sites, control programs, institutions, and universities. We're aiming to establish live online discussion forums on different aspects. People can also advertise opportunities for uh, employment, but also for funding and training opportunities. Now, we are very much aware that the global vector does not exist in a vacuum, and we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. There are many great, great, great organizations and initiatives out there already, and we are very busy currently interacting and collaborating with these. So these range from social networks and other groups and organizations, such as the Pan-African Malaria Con uh, Mosquito C uh, Control Association, to the Worldwide Insecticide Resistance Network, the Malaria Atlas Project, the Infravec 2 project in the, uh, in the European Union, but also the ISNTD, just to name a few. However, most of these current networks and initiatives focus on either a single region, a type of vector, disease, or a data type. And the aim of the Global Fact Hub is to bring all these initiatives and the information together into one single hub. This, in turn, will enable comparison and compilation of data, but also identify will allow us to identify knowledge gaps. Likewise, we also would like to encourage the community to generate further data and thereby help to grow the Global Vector Hub and the wealth of information provided by it. The Global Vector Hub is being developed in phases. The first stage will be focusing on South America and arboviruses transmitted by Aedes mosquitoes. We'll then use the expertise gathered uh, in the first stage to expand to a global uh, range, but still focus mainly on AIDS and, and arboviruses. The third stage will then focus on Anopheles and malaria. The fourth on mosquito-borne diseases globally, and eventually we're hoping to include all other vector-borne diseases on a global scale. So this includes also ticks, lice, and flies. So far, we've been quite busy since uh, we've received funding and the project got going uh, about a year and a half ago. And that we have established a steering committee of internationally renowned experts. We have been very busy engaging with the vector community to identify and define their needs. Um, obviously, in the current COVID corona crisis, there has been a bit curtailed and that we are not able to go to any conferences or meetings anymore for the foreseeable future. Like I said, we've been busy engaging with existing resources to foster collaboration and uh, coordination. We've been busy engaging with relevant programs and ministries of health. We've already started collecting vector surveillance data and we're developing a resource database uh, in which these, this information will be integrated. Likewise, we've been developing a network and the registry and we are together with a web developing company designing the look and the features of the resource. And like I said, the first stage of this program will focus on aedes born viruses in Latin America. So this is our team. We're all based in London at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. And the project is led by Professor James Logan, who's the head of the Department of Disease Control. And then our colleagues, Alex, Grace, Robert, Scott and Tanaka and myself as partnerships manager. However, we're very keen on interacting with the users on a global scale. And um, we would therefore encourage everyone to register and to contribute with your experience, your expertise, and your knowledge. How can you join the Global Vector Hub? 
First of all, for any recent updates, you can follow us on Twitter. You can register yourself, your work, and your organization by following this link. We would also like to invite you to join the College of Experts. So if you would help us peer reviewing any relevant information, for instance, resources that might be shared with us in the future, please do so by emailing us in this e under this email address. Likewise, if you have already any data that you would like to share with us, please do so by emailing us. So to summarize, our vision is that the global vector will be instrumental in the elimination of vector-borne diseases worldwide. And we aim to achieve this by providing resources, data, and network, and linking resources and connecting researchers worldwide. And by providing this platform that equips and connects the world's vector community, we hope to be able to tackle one of the today's biggest global problems, and we will make vector-borne diseases history. We'd like to thank our colleagues at ArcTech, at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, and the Global Health Network at Oxford University, who helped us develop this project. Uh, we have been funded by the United Kingdom BBSRC and the Horizon 2020 uh, uh, program of the European Union. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Frederick. Um, I'm going to clap for you. <laughs> Thank for you. Good, fantastic presentation. Thank you. I think you've got a, a global round of applause <laughs> there as well. Um, uh, thank you very much. I think you really summarized there one of the main uh, needs for, for the field of vector control and the control of vector-borne diseases. You had that lovely graph, the wheel, and thank you for including us on that of all mm. the very varied and numerous uh, active range of partners um, and co you know co collaborations already in existence in this space. And yet, when we look at certain um, vector-borne diseases, dengue, maybe dengue, or a few years ago, Zika, and so forth, it seemed that a lot of the response was really left to individual municipalities or neighboring nations were also perhaps following different strategies and reactions so it would be very important for a platform like yourselves to bring all this together so thank you very much for that um you know i was just wondering a lot of people i'm sure will have um a lot of questions for you uh, there was a very clear call for partnership there to all our attendees um and so i just having a quick look on on the chat uh attendees if you have any questions please feel free to go ahead and um, include those in the chat function it should be on the right hand side of your screen i believe um so first of all frederick you've got a lot of very warm thank yous for a really interesting presentation um a little shout out here from the isntd hello stephanie de piquer hello alessandro alvieri and all our italian friends and colleagues, Judith Weber, um, Hamid Tariq, hello, Francis, um, oops, sorry, lost that, Francis Inangoleto Laki, hello, Helena Uliartha from Indonesia as well, so a big hello to everyone who's joined today. Um, right, so probably something that a lot of our um, uh, partners here, colleagues might wonder is, um, you know, all of this is being built at the moment in English. Do you think there might be um, an opportunity to include work in different languages? Thank you. Well, thanks again. Um, first of all, thank you everyone for, for your appreciation and, and participating. Um, yes, absolutely. We want the Global Vector to be as open and accessible as possible. Um, so there will be different language options. Um, like I said, we will focus initially on South and Central America. So obviously there will be language versions in Spanish and in Portuguese, but also in French. Um, we will then evaluate the feedback from the user community if there are any other languages that would really would love to have included, um, particularly when we are going to expand to Africa and, and to Asia. Um, and then we will have to see whether we can we will have the resources and the capabilities to expand to any other languages. But um, to begin with, with these four languages, we're hoping to cover a broad range um, of, of the globe, let's say. I should also add that in terms of accessibility, we will aim to make the Global Vector um, 
also functioning on a uh, on, on a small narrow bandwidth for instance if you only have a tablet or, or a, a mobile on a smartphone for instance so if you're somewhere in the field you should also be able to have a pared down version of the global vector that you could access very important um and uh, perhaps building on to that with a, a, quite a concrete question, uh, here's an example for you, Frederick. Uh, Mohamed Tariq is asking, how can I collaborate with you on dengue and malaria um, on those problems in Pakistan? So, for example, what could Mohamed at this stage do to kind of contribute and be involved and contribute to the hub? Absolutely. That's brilliant. This is really greatly appreciated. This is exactly what we're hoping to achieve at this point um for instance i think in the first stage would be great if you if we could connect with each other so you could register on um, our website and there will be a questionnaire that you could fill in where you can um, provide more detail about your background and your experience for instance if you're based at an uh, academic institution or a health program by run by the government or if you're what else what other functions you have um, also, if you have any data you would like to share with the Global Vector Hub and thereby making it openly accessible. Um, but likewise, would like then to help you interact with others who might be working in the similar field or in the similar region. Um, so please do get in touch and I'll be more than happy to um, set up another meeting or by email at, at a later stage. Um, and kind of building on from that, uh, Yaime Lopez from saying hi from Guatemala. Frederick, um, so is this network going to focus on us on specific topics related to vectors, for example, bionomics, behavior resistance? So will you be breaking out into kind of uh, topic areas? We will definitely be aiming to include these uh, these topics. Um, so uh, uh, yes, we so uh, sorry. Um, just to need to collect my thoughts. So yes, we will need to include all these relevant topics um, when it comes to vectors and their biology, but also anything relevant for vector control. So there will be different subsections, for instance, in the resources section, but also if you have any relevant data, any information that could be shared, we would include this in the different fields of the data uh, database. And likewise, in the network, we're assuming there will be discussion forums focusing on these different aspects where researchers and where users can raise and discuss with each other the different aspects. So yes, absolutely. We're going to be very all-encompassing, very Catholic, and we're trying to include as much relevant information as possible. Um, a question from Judith Weber. Um, just coming back a bit to the data itself, um, Judith saying, thank you, very exciting project. Uh, will you include data curation in line with a common metadata standard for comparability of the data? Yes, yes, absolutely. And this is really brilliant um, that this has been raised now. Um, like I said, we're not existing in a vacuum, so we're very much in close collaboration and uh, communication with other initiatives. And particularly the vector-based group um, located in uh, North America, they've been leading for some years now already in term in, in, in with their experience in collecting and curating data when it comes to vector surveillance and vector abundance. And they've published a paper um, last year, I believe, uh, Sam Rund is the lead author, where they've outlined the minimum reporting principles um, that databases like ours should adhere to. So we will definitely follow these principles um, to make sure that all the data on the global vector will be reusable and will be compatible with other databases. So yes, absolutely. Brilliant. Uh, just a little bit of feedback from uh, Francis Olaki. Hello, Francis. And uh, Francis did say, a uh, very excellent presentation, Frederick. This was great. Um, however, perhaps a little bit more information on emerging neglected vector-born zoonotic diseases uh, could have been mentioned. Um, yes, by all means. Um, this is something that we will uh, focus on both in the on the landing page when it comes to really outbreaks. So as you can see now when the shared screen, so this is how we are anticipating the, the landing page will look like. So you will have a spinning globe and there will be 
news updates where we will include um, any reports um, from the WHO, but also from other trusted sources of information about disease outbreaks, including zoonotic uh, diseases. Um, we will also include these in the data. Um, if they're relevant, if they're vector-borne diseases, then yes, they will absolutely be included um, as well. Um, we will initially focusing on human diseases, um, and then we will need to assess in the longer term whether there will be sufficient overlap with um, animal diseases, um, whether this could be something we could look into in the longer term um, under the view of, of a One Health aspect. But uh, yes, absolutely something that we are keeping in, uh, an eye on, yes. Brilliant. Thank you, Frederick. Um, I, we've got another question here from Helena Uliartha from uh, Ministry of Health Indonesia. Uh, thank you for the interesting presentation. In the vector control part, do you have any support for the elimination of filariasis programs, especially in terms of xeno monitoring, which can be supporting the evidence for transmission? Um, that's quite a specific question specific, and, yeah. and 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 uh, i must say um from the top of, top of my head i do not know yet if we have this information already in our database in our, of, of of resources um hopefully we will have uh, this re information available very soon um like i said the first stage will initially focus on arboviruses in south america um Having said that, given that uh, quite a few of filarial worms are transmitted by mosquitoes, um, this is definitely something where the aspects of the vector control um, of the mosquitoes will be the main focus of the global vector. And then subsequently, perhaps we can also include the the aspects of xenodiagnostics that you had mentioned for filariasis. Um, I'm afraid I can only give you at the moment a bit of a vague answer on that because this is a bit further down the timeline for the project. Um, so we're not there yet. So please bear with us. But uh, we, if you have any relevant information or resources you would like to share in that uh, a field, then please do so. Absolutely. This is uh, very clearly a uh, work in progress. You're moving very swiftly on this and I'm sure you're particularly open to any kind of suggestion as to what you feel should also be included. And uh, in fact, Francis was saying, Frederick, thank you for your response and One Health is definitely key here too. Absolutely, I agree, yes. Um, we've got a couple questions here. So one of them is from Victor Anyango from Kenya. Uh, who is a graduate student at the Institut Pasteur and has actually quite an important question here, was just asking, uh, could you kindly share some more about your capacity building criteria? Um, I think capacity building will be quite a wide area. So this could be training modules, for instance, if we want to help uh, uh, building capacity in terms of entomologists in the field, because this is clearly something that is lacking um, both in South and Central America, but also across Africa from what we've heard from colleagues and users and stakeholders. Um, so I think the training aspect is very high on our, on our list. So like I said, there will be the elements of the Massive Open Online course to begin with, but also very specific aspects on how to build an insectary, how to carry out um, entomological surveillance in the field, how, do, how to identify um, vectors that you've collected, how to test them for um, pathogens, but also for insecticide resistance, how to carry out um, intervention studies, um, how to make decisions in a clinical study, how to design a study uh, appropriately so that it, the findings will be relevant and uh, useful and can be reused and integrated. All these aspects um, will be uh, provided in the resource section and will hopefully provide some, some guidance and, and assistance in building capacity. Brilliant. Uh, as you say, a completely a very key area there, building capacity, a lot of training on the ground. Um, perhaps something our uh, attendees might wonder is, so where would the funding come from for this? 
in, in the medium run, in the long run? Yeah, thank you. So I think I briefly mentioned in the, in the, in the very one of the last slides. So there was initial uh, kickoff funding from the EU um, through the Zika plan project. Um, so that was in 2017, I believe. And then we got a full grant from the BBSRC here in the UK. Um, so this is a four year funding period. Um, and then in the longer term, we are hoping to establish more long term sustainable funding revenue streams, um, either by obtaining further funding from the, let's say, regular funding channels, but we're also in uh, discussions with uh, any companies um, that would like to, to support us um, while we are still very keen on maintaining our editorial independence. But also if, for instance, any conference organizers or any organizations would like to advertise meetings or conferences, um, we'd be willing to discuss advertising as, as an option. So we have a, quite a few ideas. Um, but yeah, at the moment, uh, we're, we're still very much um, in the beginning of our own funding uh, um, envelope. Fair enough, uh, absolutely. And um, uh, just a quick comment here on the chat from Mohamed Tariq. I think you answered the question earlier mm. on and Mohamed was just thanking you, Frederick, and also saying uh, that he is currently working as an assistant professor of entomology Aridag at the Ar Arid Agriculture at University Rawalpindi. Um, on a research project working on the management of mosquitoes using green synthesized nanoparticles. Um, and he would be very interested in establishing a vector-borne disease research center in Pakistan. Uh, so obviously someone very enthusiastic there to contribute and partner with you. Uh, and so for example, what help um, could the Global Vector Hub and your team provide you know, to, to help to build this up? Yeah, no, I think this is really um, admirable, this enthusiasm, and, and this is something we would love to support. I guess, given that we have fairly limited uh, a resource or, or funding ourselves, there's not much in terms of money uh, we could provide. Um, however, we would be very happy to uh, connect you with anyone um, who might be active uh, from the funding organizations. Um, we could also provide you with online uh, tutorials and, and a teaching material if, if it would be useful. And I guess we could help you um, trying to establish your your research center um, and making sure that um, it's, it follows the most recent uh, approved guidelines from the WHO um, and um, to make sure that uh, the, the standards are um, of, of world-class standard. And I think that would be really a, a great initiative. Fantastic. So there you go. Already a one first partnership <laughs> in a, in motion there. So uh, wishing you the best of luck with all that. I'm sure um, uh, many people will want to get in touch with you. So I'm assuming the details are all on the website. Uh, yeah. Likewise, we'll also be quite happy to put you in touch if there are any more questions that you know, attendees and anyone watching this video might um, uh, might have in the future. Frederick's just actually posted on the chat. I don't know if everybody can see that, but has posted the contact details. Um, so Twitter account, email address, um, you know, joining the College of Experts. Um, if you would like to join the panel of peer reviewers as well, please don't hesitate to contact Frederick for, for all this. Um, everybody's saying thank you. We have a very, very last question, uh, Frederick. We're coming up to our 30 minutes, so it's really up to you if you've got time for one last question. Yeah, yeah no, that's fine. Yeah, that's very kind of you. Thank you. So this is from Winifred Ponzi, mm -hmm. uh, who would like to hear from you. There are a lot of innovations in vector control tools in the pipeline. So uh, what, in your opinions, this is quite a broad question, um, yeah. What is most exciting to yourself? What, what are your opinions on that? Um, yeah, no, I, I fully agree. There, there's a lot of innovation ongoing at the moment in terms of vector control. Um, obvious examples would be, uh, well, Bakia infected uh, mosquitoes and their release in South America, in Southeast Asia, in Australia. Um, sterile insect technique is, uh, and gene editing obviously is now a very, uh, uh, recent uh, development that is uh, definitely very interesting to follow on. And I think all these interventions uh, will need to be carefully evaluated on a, in a, in a stringent 
um, assessment criteria to make sure that they really are um, effective and that they can be producing uh, generally reproducible results and, and that they are really effective. Um, and once they have been integrated in the recommendations by the WHO, I think they would be brilliant if um, the information on these new innov innovative tools could be shared, um, for instance, through the Global Vector Hub, and um, if they can be adopted as quickly as possible. But like I said, we'll first need to um, establish uh, uh, their effectiveness and, and they need to be tested rigorously. Brilliant. Well, Frederick, it seems you've um, you've kind of really inspired quite a few people. We have uh, Mohamed Tariq, who obviously will definitely partner with you. Enrique Hernandez is saying thanks, Frederick, for your presentation. It's an excellent initiative, and I will reach out for collaboration. Stéphanie de Picard, uh, thank you. I will register in the Global Vector Hub as well. So, mm -hmm. uh, Frederick, lovely to see all those partnerships on Alia Johari as well. Um, so a really huge thank you to you, Frederick, today to have introduced uh, in a little bit more detail the Global Vector Hub. Thank you to our attendees for, for joining in. Um, we will be having uh, more online meetings specifically in the field of vector control and vector-borne diseases. We are kind of trying to vary a little bit the topics, but uh, definitely watch this space. We're trying to schedule one of these every Tuesday and every Thursday and uh, not taking too much of your time, just about half an hour um, each time. Um, and there's also the chat function. Hopefully very soon we'll be able to bring in the participants um, uh, on the video as well. Uh, not only if you want to. So this, you know, this won't be against your will. Um, I just would like to flash up before we go. I'll share my screen here and give you a little um, idea of what we've got coming up in the next few days so please don't miss uh on thursday so in two days from now at the same time uh half past two till three gmt that's uk time we've got professor jean-claude dujardin from itm antwerp speaking about molecular surveillance of ntds in the time of corona uh, which will be a take on gabriel garcia marquez's novel uh, love in the time of cholera, slightly different. Uh, following on from that, next week, we're very excited to welcome Dr. Mwele Malasela, um, head of the Department of NTD Control at the WHO, speaking about uh, NTDs. And then we're just finalizing the dates and times. Um, please do forgive us. These ICE NTD Connect meetings um, were put together very rapidly, so we're still kind of uh, planning things out. but. The following two meetings after that, one will will have a hand washing panel, and uh, what you know, given all the evolution during the recent uh, Corona situation, uh, have someone have a few speakers talking about uh, hand washing research and the history of it and so forth, as well as an R and D in neglected tropical diseases panel. And should you miss anything, if you can't make one of the meetings or you'd like to perhaps hear them again, um, all of the videos are available in replay on our YouTube channel. So for those of you who weren't here um, last Thursday, we had Dr. Gabriel Yan, who is a clinician in Singapore, telling us about the danger of dengue uh, at the time of COVID-19 and particularly false positive diagnosis of dengue in COVID cases and in uh, hopefully in a couple hours from now, Frederick will have your video available as well. So if anybody would like to view that again or share it perhaps within your department and your networks, please um, feel free to do so. And so just before I leave you for today, there we go, should be back. Um, I uh, just wanted to share um, just a few things that uh, came up on our radar. So uh, please look up. We, we spoke quite a lot here about malaria, dengue and so forth. And we have um, Madhukar Pai, who is director at Global Health at McGill University, has just written an opinion piece about um, 
uh, AIDS, TB and malaria, coronavirus threatens the end game. And that was an article in Forbes magazine. We also spotted in nature.com in their career column, an article called Sciencing from Home. And uh, we thought that'd be interesting to share with you because there's uh, it's an article about scientists outlining the tools they are using uh, to run their research groups remotely when labs have all now closed. Um, and finally, if you or your children or anybody you know would like to help um, in uh, would like to help researchers discover new antiviral drugs against coronavirus, I'd like to redirect you to a website. It's called fold dot it fold it uh, and it's all about solving puzzles for science so you don't have to be a scientist you don't have to be an adult even um, and in the case of the antiviral drugs against coronavirus the best results will be uh, actually tested at the university of washington's institute for protein design so something could actually come out of this and so it's very exciting um, so on that note, I'd like to thank you again, Frederick, for taking the time to join in today to iCentd Connect. I'd like to thank everybody who has um, tuned in today and hopefully see you very soon on Thursday, April the 2nd at half past two. Uh, same time, same place. We'll circulate the link very shortly. In the meantime, take care, everybody. Look after yourselves. Um, thoughts and prayers with everyone. And uh, speak to you next next Thursday. Thank you, Frederick. Thank Bye, you. everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.